So I just want to share some uh, insights we got from our uh, own data. And so I think it was quite complete what you said. So you can decide if you take an uh, interbody graft, if you don't take, if you take an anterior plate or no, no anterior plate. We generally use the peak cage. And I will present some data of our own uh, department on anterior plates uh, versus uh, cage uh, standalone. And of course, you may have the ideal case that uh, a patient with a cage standalone has a perfect uh, fusion without uh, loss of the uh, correction, and it looks quite fine. After two years, you see a fusion. This is what we see in, in a lot of cases. There, in general, if we have some um, spondylosis, we put in the spondylosis material, the bone, and this is the PK kind of for um, artificial polymer, and it's just visible with this small titanium uh, part so that you can just see uh, where it is exactly placed. We only put uh, in the, the uh, ventral osteophytes. So, and this is, it's a quite straightforward procedure. You know it, uh, and it's, uh, it's a short break of time, and everybody's fine. But it's funny, uh, when we changed about uh, 10, 12 years ago from anterior plate to st uh, cage standalone, we were quite happy, but our nurses said, uh, it's worse, yeah? They said the patients complain, yeah, about uh, neck pain and stuff, and we said, no, it's, everybody does it, it's good, yeah? But um, they were right. And this is a patient uh, where what we see also, that patients had a, a quite normal uh, post-operative course in the beginning. Then there was some uh, subsidence after six weeks. We all see the patients after four to six weeks. And he had a, a persistent pain in the neck, sometimes even uh, radiating to the arm. And on MRI and um, uh, um, uh, bone uh, scintigraphy, we saw that it was a pseudotrosis. And I think that a uh, standalone cage, now we know that post uh, operative you have a higher range of motion than in the healthy spine. So you can prevent it with using a collar, yeah, but uh, there's a significant risk of subsidence. Some say subsidence is necessary to uh, reach a fusion, yeah, but there had been at that time no prospective studies uh, where uh, in the literature, so we decided to look in our own patient collective. And it was already mentioned, there are two problems with uh, subsidence. Uh, that is that you may have a loss uh, of the low doses, which you might have re-established with the uh, surgery in the first um, part. And there's a loss of disc height, which may result to re-stenosis of the foramen with arm pain and, um, or even with the sensor motor um, deficit and it may be just neck pain. There are two factors. It's one is that um, what is found in biomedical, uh, biomechanical studies, that the range of motion is higher because you don't have the anterior uh, ligament. And the second thing is, of course, in, especially uh, in Germany, we have an uh, elderly population. That may be a reason that we see more uh, cases of subsidence. And over three years, uh, we uh, made a um, collection of data Perspective um, of about 180, 190 patients, and in the first, with the first patients, we treat them only with a standalone uh, PKH, and the consecutive patients of about 95, we made it with PKH plus anterior plate. And um, what uh, did we see? Uh, so um, after uh, the follow-up rate was uh, quite good, 90 and um, 87 percent, and we uh, saw. A subsidence with a uh, cage uh, standalone uh, in over 60 percent. But this is like in, in uh, a lot of other studies. But even an anterior plate, uh, because it's, it's a kind of dynamic uh, fixation, there may be subsidence. The difference was that the subsidence in a uh, standalone uh, P cage was much higher uh, than in uh, the anterior plate fixation that patients really on the neck disability score and all these measurement uh, tools, uh, they complained uh, more about neck pain. The uh, number of redo uh, surgery uh, because of pseudotrosis and re uh, for, for arm pain and all these uh, things was much higher in the standalone PKH group. While the, um, what we thought would be different, the adjacent uh, segment disease was not, there was no significant uh, difference. So anterior plate fixation did not lead to a much higher number of um, adjacent uh, segment disease. 
And that's uh, what you already mentioned, that with the resection of the anterior ligament, you lose the uh, biomedical <laughs> tension on the ventral surface, and that's what the anterior the plate uh, works fine with. Um, if you do anterior uh, plate fixation, it takes more OR time. It's maybe a matter of cost, but I heard that the implants with the local companies, are the, the prices are quite affordable. So that might be not a uh, reason, and there was no significant difference in the infection, the risk of myelopathy, Horner syndrome, or affection of the recurrent laryngeal nerve, because you need a bit more space if you do uh, anterior cervical plate fixation. And so we concluded from our own data in this kind of population that the, uh, with the uh, plate fixation, you, it reduces especially the rate of painful subsidence. You have less patients where you have to do a redo surgery, and especially it's not only a radiological improvement, which may be not a good outcome measurement, but it's really that the patient's doing better, and we, they don't have to use their cervical collar. We would just, they go off, but they don't receive any uh, physiotherapy or stuff like that for the first four to six weeks. They, they can't do anything like this. And what we have to take into account is that it's a uh, prolonged time of surgery and higher costs. Yeah? That's just additional. Okay, yeah.